I watched your coverage yesterday on Bloomberg West when the news hit, John. It was terrific, and I know that you have been adding the math here to find out what we know about Twitter's business because they don't have to disclose it. So tell us about some of the numbers right. here. Well, the numbers are growing really quickly, Sarah. I mean, um, eMarketer has put out some estimates on, on where the business has gone over the last couple of years, something like $140 million in revenue for them in 2011, and this year they're expected to top $500 million. And then potentially next year, a billion dollars, which was a number that actually we reported first before anybody else about sort of the goal of 2014 is this year where they could top a billion dollars. And that kind of plays into the timing of the IPO. I mean, I think all the moves we've seen for this company over the last few months, some of the acquisitions, some of the key hires would suggest they were going down this road. But when I had, had conversations with my sources earlier in the year about, you know, what would be one of the key deciding factors on whether this happens, they talked about market conditions, and I'm looking at the market. I see the S&P up 18% this year, the NASDAQ up 23% this mm -hmm. year, Facebook blowing both of those away, and Facebook's probably the most comparable company for the market to Twitter. So if the market conditions are as such, it kind of... You know, the writing in some ways, I guess, was on the wall. Yeah, John makes a good point, Scarlett, about the timing here and the run up that we've seen in Facebook shares. What's also interesting to look at here is what the future is for this company. Is it just going to generate revenue from advertising, or is it really going to move the needle in terms of e commerce and other revenue streams? And to that end, John, Twitter's been making some moves of late. It made a big purchase not so long ago, the biggest in its history. It's really moving into that advertising space in a way that we haven't seen before, isn't it? Uh, well, it, 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 it wants to own a certain market. It wants to own the market that's tied to television, primetime television. We've seen the, you know, Facebook adopted hashtags recently uh, in part to sort of say, hey, we are also going to make a play for being relevant during primetime. Twitter wants to be the place that gets a lot of real-time advertising dollars. It's a market right. that still is in a lot of ways intangible. But they're trying to make the case to the marketers right. for that. John, you're our West Coast stud. You're in Los Angeles, but you're in San Francisco a lot. Where do these deals get decided? Is there like some coffee shop or pizza parlor where all these big decisions get made? Um, you know, that's a good question, Tom. Uh, you know, Jack Dorsey has his, has his favorite coffee shops, which sometimes we, you know, try to follow these guys around to see where they're going. Um, a lot of the work for the for the key revenue players has been on the road. Uh, they're 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 rarely in San Francisco these days. Oh, cool. They're going out and they're getting they're getting the message. You know, I mean, it's very simple, right? You got to tell an advertiser, hey, we think you should be advertising on Twitter, and they say, great. Why? So you got to spend some time. You got to do the presentations, all that kind of stuff. Interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, John Ehrlichman, thank you so much. That's a break exclusive. They're not in San Francisco. They're actually out working.